Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. I'm Sally Burdett, live from Johannesburg. Your top stories tonight. Horror and outrage over the rape of a seven-year-old girl who was attacked while in the bathroom of a busy Pretoria restaurant. The police minister meets angry Cape Flats residents. They say police are cracking down on them instead of the criminals. And we go to Tolobeni in the Eastern Cape, where a fight over mining is tearing the community apart. And a visit this past weekend from the Mineral Resources Minister doesn't seem to have helped at all. And uh, just a week before that important job summit, Sally, we're still losing jobs in the formal sector. Details coming up. Thank you. But let's start here. The question many South Africans are asking tonight, where are our children safe? not even in a busy restaurant, it seems. Now, over this past weekend, a seven-year-old girl was raped in the bathroom of the Silverton Dross restaurant. The National Prosecuting Authority plans to oppose bail for a 20-year-old man accused of the crime. He's in police custody and will appear in court on Tuesday next week. The accused first appeared yesterday after being arrested over the weekend. He's been charged with rape, drug possession, and assault with intent to do grievous bodily harm. Erin Bates has the details. Police spokesperson Colonel Lungelo Dlamini has refused comment to ENCA on the child rape which occurred at the Dross in Silverton, Pretoria on Saturday late afternoon to early evening. He says the case is now under investigation and uh, that Dross is just a little over a kilometre from the police station here in Silverton. ENCA has spoken to a patron who witnessed uh, the accused being assaulted by a group, a mob of men and says uh, the accused was naked at the time. He was later seen by the same patron in trousers being taken away by police. And ENCA understands that the accused, a 20-year-old white man who I uh, hear has black hair, was kept in police custody until his first appearance in court on Tuesday morning when he was charged with rape assault with intent to grievous bodily harm and drug possession. Uh, he has not yet pleaded and uh, I was not at court, hence no mention of the accused's name as yet. His next court appearance is on the 2nd of October, that's next week Tuesday, and he remains in police custody until then. We understand that the investigations are ongoing and the NPA's provincial spokesperson in Gauteng has encouraged anyone with information relevant to this case to either contact uh, the NPA and ask for the state prosecutor or to contact the police at Silverton Police Station. Erin Bates, Pretoria. Moving to Cape Town now, Police Minister Becky Trele has promised to work with Cape Flats communities to fight crime. This after angry anti-crime protests from residents this week, the minister has now visited Born to Heerville. As Atiem Tungana reports, emotions ran high today during the meeting. Police Minister Becky Tele arriving in Born to Heerville following violent clashes between the police and some protesting residents. Some of these residents were part of a shutdown that took place in several communities, calling for an end to gang violence, unemployment, crime and poverty. When you make a call to 10 for one, you are lucky to get through. When you report the crime, you are lucky if they come within one hour. The swift response from police during the various pickets came under the spotlight. I'll be touching the IP people to come. But one thing that we have agreed to do with the, especially with the committee that organized shutdown, is to put that on the table because we want to hear also their suggestions. How do they think these matters must be handled? Residents also questioned police visibility during protests. They say they need to see more officers fighting crime in their communities. The POP is a group of people that we move it could be national level where there is a problem we move them there we agree that we have units that deal with the matters and pop they have that when people they are having their they are having their match Sele is expected to return with the national police commissioner next week ahead of an imbizo that's also in the cards Ah, Tim Tongana, Cape Town. 
Mama Winnie Madikizela Mandela would have been 82 years old today. The neglect of her house in Branford in the Free State has been a sore point for years. While money has been set aside in the past, it was mismanaged. But now the Department of Arts and Culture plans to ask Treasury for more money to finish the renovations. Deputy Minister Maggie Sochu visited the site today. We have appointed um, a project planner by the name of Rasimati. It's a local uh, uh, company. Then they were expected then to appoint uh, contractors. And then the process went on, and then the closing date for that process is about a month ago, of which they have identified two constructing companies. But unfortunately, the budget or the requirement from those two construction companies, it was very high compared with what we have budgeted for. Hence, then, it means that we have to go back to National Treasury to make sure that we ask for more funds. The ANC in KwaZulu-Natal has appointed a task team to act on the Morani Commission report. Now, the commission, set up to pro-political killings in the province, found that power and greed were the main reasons for the assassinations. The ANC in the province says its task team will decide if members should account, and an action plan with clear timelines is to be established. The task team that we've set up and the work that must be done in government, when the, when the Premier briefed the ANC leadership after he has released the report, part of what we asked the Premier to do was to mandate the provincial treasurer to reflect on what is it that needs to be done to tighten the current system of procurement in the province. Are there weaknesses in the system? If there are weaknesses, to what extent? Is there room to tighten them? What interventions are required? But on the other hand, we believe that uh, it is not only about weaker systems. It's also about the level of consciousness for those who are charged with the responsibility to manage the system. Kese Naya, the businessman who calls President Cyril Ramaphosa the K-word in a video clip posted on Facebook, has apologized to the president. Naya was arrested last Wednesday and appeared in the Verula Magistrates Court today. He faces charges of criminal injuria and incitement. Now, his family says he's physically and mentally unwell. The prosecutor has referred Naya for mental observation based on affidavits received from his family. The district surgeon who examined him says he appears delusional. But the state wants to be certain that he can understand court proceedings before he can launch a bail application. Naya himself told reporters at court today that he doesn't need mental evaluation. So ahead on E! News, we'll get international news view scores of Russians take to the streets to protest pension reforms. And of course, Money News with Devon. Yes, indeed. We take a look at those job numbers as promised coming up. Let's talk money now with Devon Morgan. Hi there, Devon. You've got jobs numbers and they ain't pretty. No, not at all. So this is the employment statistics report. It comes out quarterly. Mm -hmm. Not unemployment. What this report does is tells you, uh, Sally, how the different sectors within the economy are performing in terms of job capacity. So overall, between April and June, South Africa's formal economy lost 69,000 jobs. That's in the second quarter. Now, when we zone in and we find out exactly which sectors are losing these jobs, we'll just slide through here and you'll see community services losing 67,000 jobs in the second quarter. This is largely government jobs. And of course, given government's austerity measure at the moment, one can understand why the job losses are big there. Then you look at manufacturing. That's a sector that government wants to prop up they want to get confidence going in that sector so it can be labor absorbing. But as you can see, at 13,000 job losses, not really going to plan. I'm sure it's not a surprise. We're in a, in a recession. Indeed. So we've got negative growth. And mm. when you have negative growth compared to, and you just add on the fact that confidence in the economy as far as yeah. business is concerned, Sally, not great. is not up there. You're not going to get investors pulling out money, building factories, mm. hiring mm. people. We'll just take a look at the next graphic, job gains. There are some gains in some sectors. For example, trade, 7,000 up, business services by the same margin. This is just too little to dent that unemployment rate. It doesn't offset the jobs that were lost, Sally. Let's hope there's some better news coming from the markets. From the RAND, yes, but let's start off with the local market. If you look at the JSE very quickly, you'll see that uh, it's 
half a percent down, so not good news there. Mm. Uh, industrials, which incorporate your retails and so forth, also uh, pretty much in the flat. Uh, miners were a big drag this afternoon on the all share. Let's turn our, our, our attention to commodity shares. We'll take a look very quickly to see what that says. Gold minus 3.2 percent down, not optimistic there. Platinum miners doing a little bit better, 2.5 percent up, but overall miners bringing the market down. Let's take a look at your commodity prices because that's where you'll find that oil price. Remember, that's directly related to the petrol price. $81.60 a barrel. So if that goes on in that fashion, you can expect hikes to be quite severe if the rand weakens. But when we take a look at the rand this evening, we see, in fact, that the rand has been strengthening against the US dollar. Look at that. Yesterday, mm. 1435 14 rand 15 cents to get yourself a green back this afternoon. 16.64 for a euro. And Sally, if you're heading off to London and booking a, a hotel Thankfully room, not. <laughs> 18 rand 67 cents to get yourself a sterling. <laughs> Thank you so much, Devin Morgan. Let's take a look at international news now. And protests have flared up around Russia in response to the Russian parliament passing the pension reform bill. Now, this increases the retirement age in the country by five years. Men will now retire at the age of 65, women at the age of 60. Now, many say with a low life expectancy in Russia, most people will not be able to receive state pensions. Hundreds of people have been displaced after flames engulfed the wooded hills in Italy's central Tuscany region. Now, the blaze started late last night, believed to have been deliberately started. Over 700 people were told to leave their homes. Schools and the local airport have been closed. Uh, back home now and we go to the wild coast where a bitter battle for mining resources is tearing a village apart. For years, proposed titanium mining in Kolobeni has been on the cards. There are those who believe mining is their ticket out of poverty, but others believe the mineral wealth and the people will simply be exploited. This past weekend, Mineral Resources Minister Gwede Mantashe came to the village to discuss the mining plans, but anti-mining activists protested and police fired stun grenades and tear gas to disperse them. Malungelo Boy reports on the ordinary people caught in the middle of this fight. Nomakaya Yalo is making a mat which she says she will use as a bed. The mother of three says all she wants is to see progress and development in Kolobeni. Mother of five, Busisi Wechucha, shares the same sentiment. She says she's never ever been able to secure employment in her entire adult life. Zami Lenkota is one of the leaders who want the area's titanium rich sands to be mined. He and many others believe this will boost the local economy. They also say the village hasn't really benefited much from tourism. So you're saying the community here has not benefited from, not from tourism? At all. We have tried. The EU have funded the program. He employed WWF and uh, wildlife and also Pondo Crop to facilitate the tourism in this area. But as you see, there is no tourism that is moving in this area. And mining, is it the solution? Mining, it will be a catalyst. But Mabu Dedanga is in the other camp. He doesn't want the sight of miners in his village. The Amadiba Crisis Committee, which has been spearheading the strong opposition to the mining in the area, says it can't give up the land of their forefathers to mining interests. We have everything we need. We have land. We have the project that we want to continue work on it like tourism, agriculture, those are, are the things that can be benefit to the people also that stay forever, doesn't take for one year or two years. 
While a moratorium remains in place for now, divisions over the mining have also meant that villagers who would help bury each other no longer do so. Still ahead on E-News, we've got all your weather. We've got Candace standing by in Cape Town. And then the Fresh Prince bungee jumps over the Grand Canyon. Find out why. <laughs> Let's go to our weather centre in Cape Town. Candice McKechnie standing by. Hi there, Candice. You know, here in Johannesburg, it feels like we've skipped right past spring, straight into summer. And it feels like we're still lingering in winter. <laughs> but uh, a few thunderstorms have started up again over the northeastern part of South Africa. So definitely starting to feel a little bit of that spring feeling. And that's mainly, mainly been over on Pumalanga today. On Thursday, we'll see them forming yet again over that same part of South Africa. But also been quite uncertain about that thunderstorm activity at the moment. And they can't seem to make up their mind. But we hope that they start off soon to cool everybody off in Harting. The rest of South Africa can expect a fine and dry weather, especially over the central part. And of course, we're expecting yet another cold front in the Western Cape. Two weak cold fronts moving in on Thursday, bringing in the chance of rainfall with it. The Northern Cape remains dry, though hot, especially over the eastern part of the province, 32 for Uppington and Kimberley. And we're expecting a bit of cloud into Colvinia at 24. Light rain is forecast for Cape Town and Nangaban with a high of around 20. We'll see warm weather as we head towards Burford West and Urtran with a mild forecast as we head towards the coast. Mostly clear and hot for much of the eastern Cape. A maximum temperature of 25 for Port Alfred and East London to shy of 30 in Umtata. Partly cloudy at 25 for Durban. Still sizzling hot over the northwestern part of Kwasudi Natal with the possibility of thundershowers. And thundershowers also possible from my, um, uh, in Makazeni all the way through to Mkondo, Bombela topping 33 degrees. Partly cloudy and hot as we head over the western part of Mpomalanga. You'll see a bit of cloud for Limpopo with another hot day, a sizzling hot afternoon for Lepalale at 37. Hot weather continues for northwest with partly cloudy and dry weather, 35 as we head towards Mahiking. In the Free State, we're expecting a high of around 30 over the eastern part of the province, sunny at 31 for Bloemfontein. Partly cloudy and hot for Harting, 34 for Pretoria with the rest of those highs at 32 with a very slight chance of thunderstorms on Thursday. That chance increases on Friday with thunderstorms all the way through to KZN. Light rain and cool weather remains for uh, the Western Cape through Friday but on Saturday we're expecting clearer conditions in the west with thundershowers still in the forecast for Harting and some rain and cooler weather in the east. That's all from the Weather Centre for now. Have a great night. You too, Candice McKechnie there in Cape Town. And finally, Will Smith's 50th birthday celebration got turned upside down quite literally. The Fresh Prince bungee jumped from a helicopter over the Grand Canyon. And if that wasn't dangerous enough, adding an extra element of danger, the helicopter is constantly moving. It sounds like huge fun. Smith, of course, was chilling out, maxing and relaxing, all cool. The moment was shared on his YouTube channel. Take a look. I like to spend my birthdays jumping into a large cake, not over the Grand Canyon, but each uh, to their own. Now, before we go, let's just recap your top story this evening. Horror and outrage over the rape of a seven-year-old girl who was attacked while in the bathroom of a busy Pretoria restaurant. And that's your news. Take care. Good night.